What's up everybody, Mike Lazarecki here and welcome back to another tutorial video. A couple months back, Peter McKinnon did a tutorial on how to create a custom looping background in After Effects. And today I'm going to show you how to do the same kind of an effect, but this time in DaVinci Resolve 16. Let's go. So in order to accomplish this effect, we're going to have to dig a little bit into the fusion panel. So let's just jump right into the computer and get started, huh? Let's do that. Let's go ahead and open up a new project within Resolve and up here in the media pool, it doesn't really matter what panel you're in, but in the media pool, right click and click on new fusion composition. We can leave it named fusion composition one. We want this to be 20 seconds long and hit create. Now in order to be able to work on this composition, you can either drag it into the timeline or you can just double click on it and it will automatically bring you into Fusion. Since it's a brand new Fusion composition, all we have is a media out and there's nothing connected to it. That's why you can't see anything in either viewer because there's nothing connected to the media out node. So these viewers are signified by these two little dots. You can see that the right one is selected on our media out, which is the way I like to keep it so that I can always kind of keep an eye on my final composition up here on the right. On the left, I tend to toggle this one around to different parts of what I'm working on. And you'll see that a little bit more here in a minute. So the first thing we want to do to create this effect is bring in a background node. We're going to leave this background node colored black and we're going to connect it to our media out. You'll see here we now have a black background. So if we leave our background node selected, you can change the color of that background to pretty much anything you want. And this is going to become a little bit of a repeating theme here with this tutorial. Now we need to bring in our logo. And I have a signature logo, which is basically just a PNG with a blank background or a transparent background. And I brought that into my media pool and now I'm gonna drag it onto my node timeline. Now, if I wanna see what this looks like just natively within the application, I can click on this left viewer panel and you can see that it just brings in a white PNG image with a transparent background, just like I said. Now, in order for us to change the color of this, you guessed it, we need to bring in another background node. So before we go any further, let's rename our logo to, well, logo sounds good to me. And let's rename this background node to logo color. Now we connect our logo to the logo color node and we're going to change this one and you can now see that that's black. And it did something weird. We zoomed in there a little bit and that is not what we want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in to the settings panel on that logo color node and we're going to change where it says fit mask from crop to inside and that will resize our logo to work the way that we want it to. Now we can also go ahead and change the color of our logo once again to pretty much whatever we want. So in this case we'll stick to Peter McKinnon's color palette and we'll just go with a dark gray and we're going to want to connect this logo color into our primary uh, node tree here. So what we need to do that is a merge node. Now in order to get a merge node you can either hit shift and space together on your keyboard and type in merge and then you can see it show up right here and you just click on it and hit add or you can take this little pick whip and connect it to this side of the background node and it'll automatically create a merge node. Once we do that we see that we've got our logo now in our final composition. That's great, that's a good start. Believe it or not we're more than halfway there already. Now if we select our merge node we are now presented with a whole bunch of different positional and other parameters that we can change based on our liking. Now in order to create that looping background effect, what we want to do is come down to where it says edges and change it from canvas to wrap. Now it doesn't look like it really did anything until you reduce the size. And you can see that you now have endless rows of your logo. Now what's cool here is you can change the size as I just showed you. You can also change the rotation angle to give it a little bit more of a unique look. We'll leave it at about negative 15.7. Now we're pretty much three quarters of the way done here and the last piece of the puzzle is to animate this thing, right? So in order to animate it, you can see we have our timeline here and inside our merge nodes inspector panel, we have these diamonds on the far right. Those are our keyframe toggles. So on the first frame of this composition, let's go ahead and click the keyframe toggle for the center position. And then let's go all the way to the end so the last frame, frame 479, and then we are able to either change the center location using these two fields up here for your X and Y, or you can simply click the center and click and drag 
in the direction that you want to change it. And it allows you to kind of see the direction that you're going to change it in using this line here as sort of a guide. If you really want to be specific, you can click just the arrows and constrain that motion to one axis at a time. That way you can get a much more precise movement. But that's it. That's the whole animation for the really basic version of this. If we go back to the beginning of our timeline and press play, now you can see that we have this endless loop of our logo just kind of scrolling across the background, which is exactly what we wanted. Well, that's all well and good, but let's take this to the next level. Let's select all of these nodes by clicking and dragging, and then we'll hit the delete key, and we're going to start fresh real quick here. So we're going to bring in a background node and connect it up. We're going to change the color of this to, let's say, a dark red. Next, we're going to bring in another background node, and we're also going to bring in an ellipse node. Okay, now this is going to be a little bit different process, but bear with me here. We connect this one up to our background two, and let's just pop this into the viewer. You can kind of see what's starting to happen here. We've got a, a black circle, basically. What we're working on creating here is actually a vignette, so we're going to go ahead and change the name of this stuff to yet and we know that the background too is the vignette color that's fine it's going to stay black but on our vignette node we want to go ahead and hit invert and then we're going to change the width and soft edge all the way up actually we're going to go ahead and increase this to 0.4 and then we're going to increase the border width to kind of soften that up even further. And now we're going to connect this background node to the other one with a merge. And you can see we've got our background with a cool vignette on it, which is already looking pretty sweet. So now let's bring in our logo. Let's bring in another background node. Go ahead and connect this up. Rename for organizational purposes. And we'll go logo color. Now we want to go ahead and remember to change this guy to that. So we're going to leave that black and we'll connect that up here. That'll create another merge node. And now we have that in the middle of our page. Now, so let's go ahead into our merge node here and change this to wrap. And let's take advantage of the fact that we can't see any of that quite yet. So this is going to be the merge node that we want to animate. So we're at the first frame of our composition. Let's go up and hit the keyframe toggle for our rotation angle here. Let's go ahead and move forward four frames. And we're going to begin a rotation this direction. Now let's move forward another four frames. We'll go into our angle field here and we're going to type in 360 degrees. And it's going to look like it's just back upright, okay? But really, it does a full spin, okay? Once we have that plugged in, we also want to go ahead Go back to our first keyframe, hit our size toggle, and let's go ahead and go in those four frames and increase our size to 1.3. And then we're going to go forward those four frames again, and we're going to reduce our size all the way down to where we wanted to see it here, maybe a little smaller. Go forward three frames and maybe increase the size just a little bit more. Okay, so what we've actually created here is a cool little animation that kind of kicks off this effect. So if we back this up to the beginning and play it back, you get this kind of neat little animation out of it. Now what we can also do to add to this effect is we can add motion blur in the inspector panel. And let's say increase the quality to four. And that will allow for us to see a little bit more of that movement. Now let's go back in and animate just the normal scrolling motion. So let's go near our last keyframe from that initial animation. 
go back into our inspector panel and toggle the keyframes on for the center position. And let's go all the way to the end of our comp. And let's move these guys over here. Go all the way back to the beginning of our comp and press play. Yeah, so we got some cool animation going on with this background now. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a look into how you can make this a little more customized, a little bit more your style, and uh, enjoy still having that nice, cool looking background for uh, whenever you're doing different stuff within your YouTube videos. So there you go. A Peter McKinnon style looping background in DaVinci Resolve 16 with a little Mike Lazarecki twist on it. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something useful out of it. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and consider hitting the subscribe button at the same time if you wouldn't mind. And uh, yeah, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Later. <laughs>